new provisions to the Health Professions Act, an act to protect patients, HPA, practice guidelines. This learning module is intended to guide regulated members of the College of Alberta Psychologists in understanding the Health Professions Act provisions for preventing and addressing sexual abuse and misconduct. After reviewing this learning module, learners should be able to summarize the existing established regulatory requirements and documents required for registration, articulate key legislated definitions, Describe changes to the HPA within the context of existing regulatory registration protections. Know the reporting requirements for self and other regulated health professionals. Describe the College of Alberta Psychologists Patient Relations Program. Summarize the impact of sexual boundary violations on clients, the profession, and psychologists. What is the focus of the new provisions to the HPA? Bill 21, an act to protect patients, received royal assent on November 19, 2018, and was fully enacted on April 1, 2019. This act amends the HPA and provides specific guidance to regulated health professionals for the purpose of preventing and addressing sexual abuse and sexual misconduct with clients. Bill 21, now integrated into the Health Professions Act, provides a very specific set of definitions and laws with significant consequences to health professionals who do not adhere to the new HPA provisions. The first learning objective in this module reviews the existing established regulatory requirements and documents required for registration as a psychologist in Alberta. The profession of psychology in Alberta has a strong foundation for protecting clients. These include the following a graduate course on ethics, a criminal record and vulnerable sector check, professional references, 1,600 hours of evaluated supervised practice, examinations in foundational knowledge and ethics, and lastly, training in preventing and addressing sexual abuse and misconduct. There are mandatory requirements to which all regulated members must comply. These are, firstly, to provide a criminal record check and a vulnerable sector check to the college at the time of application, and, secondly, to provide any information on previous or current professional regulatory, criminal, and civil investigations at the time of application or renewal. Regulated members who have had their practice permits canceled for sexual misconduct cannot reapply for a minimum period of five years. Former members subject to practice permit cancellation for sexual abuse will never be able to re-register as members. As you can see, the consequences for sexual misconduct and abuse are significant. Once becoming registered, there are multiple professional expectations a registered member must follow. These are outlined in the Health Professions Act and other legislation, CPA Canadian Code of Ethics for Psychologists, CAP Standards of Practice, CAP Professional Practice Guidelines. The foundational ethical principles for Alberta psychologists are respect for dignity of persons and peoples, responsible caring, integrity in relationships, and responsibility to society. The second learning objective in this module highlights key legislated definitions related to preventing and addressing sexual abuse and misconduct. The new HPA amendments provide four key definitions to ensure clarity amongst all health professions. The HPA's definitions are specific and graphic. This is to ensure there is no ambiguity. Some professionals have questioned the need for such graphic definitions. Others believe these are essential to fulfilling all regulated healthcare professionals' commitment to public protection. It is therefore necessary for all regulated healthcare professionals to be aware of and understand what constitutes sexual abuse and misconduct. You may notice that the HPA definitions use the word patient. The CAP standards of practice recognizes the word patient or patients as synonymous with the terms client or clients. Amendments to the HPA require each college to define the term patient and the length of time that must transpire before, if ever, sexual contact is permitted between the regulated member and patient. CAP standards of practice consider the term patient as synonymous with client. A client is anyone who has received professional services by regulated members, including individuals, guardians, substitute decision makers, couples, families, groups, communities, peoples, and or other groups. 
The HPA's definition of sexual misconduct means any incident or repeated incidents of objectionable or unwelcome conduct, behavior, or remarks of a sexual nature by a regulated member towards a patient, including remarks that the regulated member knows or ought reasonably to know, will or would cause offense or humiliation to the patient, or adversely affect the patient's health and well-being, but does not include sexual abuse. Sexual abuse constitutes any sexual intercourse between a regulated member and a patient of that regulated member. Sexual abuse means the threatened, attempted, or actual conduct of a regulated member towards a patient that is of a sexual nature and includes any of the following conduct. Sexual intercourse between a patient and regulated member. Genital to genital, genital to anal, oral to genital, or oral to anal contact between a regulated member and a patient. Masturbation of a regulated member by or in the presence of a patient. Masturbation of a regulated member's patient. Encouraging a regulated member's patient to masturbate in the presence of that regulated member. Touching of a sexual nature of a patient's genitals, anus, breasts, or buttocks by a regulated member. It is understood that discussions of a sexual nature may be appropriate for specific psychological services focusing on human sexuality. These discussions are not prohibited under the HPA amendments as long as they are appropriate to the service provided. Next, we will elaborate on the HPA amendments to the complaints and hearing process addressing sexual abuse and misconduct. Reasonable efforts must be made for hearing tribunals to include at least one person of the same gender identity as the complainant. The hearing process can be conceptualized in four stages. Stage 1, finding guilt or innocence. Stage 2, sanctioning for any findings of guilt. Stage 3, appeal to counsel by regulated member and or complaints director. Stage 4, appeal to court of appeal by regulated member and or complaints director. There are serious consequences for findings of unprofessional conduct due to sexual abuse and sexual misconduct. These include practice permit suspensions and cancellations. All former regulated members subject to a practice permit cancellation for sexual misconduct, as opposed to abuse, cannot reapply for a minimum period of five years. All former members subject to a practice permit cancellation for sexual abuse will be subject to a permanent prohibition from re-registration. This learning objective will address the new reporting obligations under the amended HPA. If the psychologist is a regulated member of one or more colleges, professional regulatory bodies, and subject to any civil or regulator events, they must report their involvement as soon as possible to CAPS Registrar and provide a copy of any finding as soon as reasonably available. If the psychologist has been charged or convicted of an offense under the Criminal Code of Canada, they must report in writing as soon as reasonably possible to the CAP Registrar. If a psychologist who is acting in their professional capacity has reasonable grounds to believe that the conduct of another regulated member constitutes sexual abuse and or misconduct, they must make a report to CAP's complaints director. Notwithstanding the above, if the information was received while the psychologist was providing direct services to a regulated member, and if no member of the public is at continued risk for ongoing, imminent physical and or emotional harm, a report is not required by the treating psychologist. An employer, contractor, who has reasonable grounds to believe that the conduct of a psychologist constitutes sexual abuse and or misconduct must, as soon as possible, give notice of that conduct to the CAP Complaints Director. Additionally, all psychologists must abide by all other legislated mandatory reporting obligations outside of the Health Professions Act, for example, the Child, Youth, and Family Enhancement Act. The Health Professions Act amendments also require colleges to have in place a patient relations program. All colleges must develop a patient relations program, which includes mandatory education programs directed to the prevention of sexual abuse misconduct for CAP staff, counsel, hearing panelists, and members. All colleges must establish a fund to support the treatment needs for complainants under the Health Professions Act amendments. This learning objective will help psychologists summarize the impact of sexual boundary violations. There are potentially significant implications of sexual abuse and misconduct for clients, the profession, and regulated members. First, we will highlight potential implications for clients. Potential impact to the client in the case of either sexual abuse or misconduct can be trauma, re-traumatization, cumulative trauma, exacerbation of pre-existing issues, loss of trust in regulated member, loss of trust in profession, resulting in an unwillingness to engage in accessing helping professions, and lastly, collateral impact to significant others. 
Next, we will talk about the implications of sexual abuse and or misconduct by psychologists on the profession. The impact of sexual abuse or misconduct by a regulated member harms the integrity and reputation of the profession of psychology, harms the integrity and reputation of healthcare professionals, reduces public and government confidence in self-regulation, increases costs to all members of the profession, and lastly, results in additional unforeseen consequences. The third area of impact resulting from sexual abuse or misconduct by a regulated member is to the psychologist. Some of these impacts are legislated suspension or permanent cancellation of a practice permit, legislated self-reporting obligations, legislated reporting of other regulated health professionals, prohibition of personal, intimate, romantic, and or sexual relationships with former clients or close relative of clients, former client in perpetuity, collateral impact to significant others, and lastly, additional unforeseen circumstances. In conclusion, the amendments to the HPA were created out of growing awareness that there is a need to protect patients under the care of a variety of health professionals, and there is no legitimate reason for sexual abuse or sexual misconduct. As a psychologist, it is important to remember that there is no circumstance under which it is appropriate to have sexual contact between a regulated member and a patient client. There is no circumstance when sexual misconduct between a psychologist toward a patient client can be excused or taken lightly. The resulting harm to the client, the profession, and the regulated member is too great.